they got to go, we got to go get one of them real coaches. Yeah, I feel you, man. You know, I just be trying to have hope. Once they going high, some fucking body ain't like I could change their fucking mind. But he wasn't the, you know, the high I was thinking about. Yeah. You know. What's up with Mark Jackson? What's up with Sam Cassell? Yeah, man. I, said, I don't know what the fuck, man. I wish we could have got mine at Williams' ass back. But, man, the Pelicans 11 in the West right now, and they like four games behind for the for the AC. We're going to be playing in the play-in game. Oh, they go to play-in is the ninth seed, too? The play-in. Uh, is the eight and the ninth seed? No, I think the... It must be, huh? So at the playing game, I had to play the number one seed. The winner. Right. So that'll be the eight and the ninth seed then. How many teams go? It been eight. I don't know what chain. I know they got this playing shit now. No, nine and ten. Gonna play in. Gonna, gonna, gonna. I mean, oh. seven, eight, nine, and ten gonna play for the playing. I think it's something like 14? that. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Yeah, I gotta do my homework on the um on a new playoff shit. I ain't even I ain't even know none of that was happening. Expanded. Well yeah, cause look, they got all the way to ten and then a line and he's standing. So I'm guessing Yeah, that's true. Right, like one through six then they got a line and then seven through ten they got a line. Man, what the fuck they doing? That's why the NBA players came out against it. Oh, here it go. Team C is 7 through 10, and each conference will compete in a play-in tournament. It's a tournament. At the end of a regular <laughs> season. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, out there, my. So that's just extra games on a nigga body. Then he got to go into a Game 7 series with the 1 and 2 seed. Right. Which don't I make wonder, any sense no, at all. But look, would that be an advantage or not? Y'all over there playing games and shit, getting hot, and you say you come out just playing shit. How many games? I mean, it's a tournament, so. Like a single this, elimination. Like the motherfucking um, single NCAA elim- tournament. Y'all go win three games or whatever, two games playing real good, and the, the one seed and the two seed waiting on you. You be done caught them at home because you hot and won a game at their house. That make it tough right quick, to be real. If you going to play more games than me before the fucking playoffs start, I don't think they thought that through. They didn't think that through at all. They couldn't have thought that all the way through. Like, I don't give a fuck how good you think I am. If you about to warm up all that fucking time before me, shit, no, man. Yeah, the Pelicans, where the Pelicans is, they the 11 C, so they could get in the playing game. Mm, right. That's what I'm telling you. They're going to finish somewhere in between 7 and 10. Man, yeah, man, go to state Sacramento, Memphis. And, like, just say, you know, Utah. If y'all was to draw the Pelicans in the first round, that can be a trap. Yes, indeed. Yes, that could yes. be a trap for you to, to have to play a hot Pelicans team coming out this little playing tournament. No lie. Oh, this is a crazy year after the COVID, though. I feel like nobody really, nobody really that yet. Like Shit, they played 72 games. They beat they that. I, I mean, it just feels different. Like it just feels different this this season, you know. The Brooklyn stuff. Then you got other teams with a lot of guys hurt, and you know nobody really just the other people been there. Is what Phoenix? Phoenix been pretty healthy the whole year. Utah been pretty healthy the whole year. Does Zion need help? Of course. 
anybody could use help. Everybody in the NBA need help. What Zion need, what Zion needs the most to me is a real coach. But a coach that's not too old and still know what's going on with the game today and how the game is changing. I don't think Stan Van Gundy style fits in the NBA no more. The game that passed him by. Zion need coaching more than he need help. Hmm. Coaching then he need help. Yeah, he need more coaching than he need help. I feel like they got a playoff team right now. But I don't really see them. I don't really see them doing too much. It's like they be kind of playing street ball. They be winning a lot of games. And the stat I just found out, I want to throw out that I just found out the stat yesterday. The Pelicans have lost 18 games by five points or less. Most in the NBA. That's coaching. That's coaching. That's coaching. Most in the NBA. I remember um, it was crazy. I got a story with that. I used to tell my dog, Kale, I'm not sure if we was at St. Nog or at Dillard when I told him this, but I I for sure just heard it from somewhere, a coach or a sports center or something, somebody. And that was it was if you lose by 15, 20 or something, it was the players' fault. That's what I was I, I and it stuck with me though. But if you lose by single digits or three, four, five points, it's because you and that coach had the it was between y'all two at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like something ain't go right. A a, a player could have hit a big shot or something, but you may not know the the um the in between the lines with the coaches had to decide some shit or do some shit that determined what happened in these last little minute or two. You know, however it happened, because you can you can simply you could be down by fifteen, come back and lose by four. And you know what? You know what? It's still a coach fault at that point. You know what I'm saying? Even the ones who lost, something you ain't click on early on or something. You know what I'm saying? But it's a uh, that stuck with me. Kill, kill, kill. Used to always tell me that when I see him. Not kill, be roughing this shit. He was like, man, you lose by woo de woo is on the coast. You lose by 10, 15, 20, whatever. I mean, you know, I guess it was just. The other team had it going, or the, you know, the enough wasn't enough talent on the floor or something. But you're right. That's a good stat you brought out. What it was, 18 games? 18 games. 18 games, the Pelicans lost by five or less points. That's crazy. What if you win half of them? <laughs> you you win half of seed. them, you you in you in the yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. You number four seed, man. That's why I said he need coaching more than he need help. Help gonna come with free agency and things like that. We're gonna be able to get him help, but I just feel like we need one of them coaches like a uh like a Sam Cassell, you know, a See, Mark, I don't Mark, know. Mark Jackson. I mean I don't know what's going on with Mark Jackson, bro, but something going on, they put a black ball on top of his head. He can't get an NBA job. I don't know what's going on. I mean, me personally with the coaching, I I fucks with Sam Cassell from the, him a player, <coughs> and I see that he is coaching. I don't know what his style is. I don't know if that's who he needs. He's been on Doc staff the last fifteen years, which so he should be. He's a good up. understanding for he's, sure. He's gamed up with but, Doc, and he's had a couple of nice players. That he he he's been around some nice teams, and I want to say he has championship experience too because he was, I think he was on the bench with him in Boston. 
I think he followed Doc from Boston, but I don't think he was the assistant coach yet in Boston like he has been not in Philly and in L.A. He the assistant coach. But I say, man, you've been with Doc 13 years, 15 years, whatever, and they keep throwing your name out here for these jobs. You ain't get it yet, but, you know, I'm going to say he read it just on the strength of Doc, being with Doc that long. And being around good teams that got egos and all stars and multiple yeah, all stars. That's what I'm players. thinking about. I'm like Ty oh, Lue, you know, he go to come to mind for me, but fuck, I know he. Where the fuck Ty? Cle- Clippers, huh? Yeah, the Clippers job, yeah, I'm tripping. Clippers got Ty Lue. Um, you know, that was a good move. I can't think about Club. I mean, we got Stan Van Gundy right now. We got to deal with this nigga. But I do, from what you see, is he's a. A old school type of practice coach and stuff, like how he get down and yeah, shit. Look, it's not the same. I remember I JJ Redick when he came. He was like, "Damn, I got, I had this dude when I was in my first year, or something." Now I'm in year fifteen. I ain't trying to do all that. Like, what you the know? No, JJ Redick before, you know, this before year started. Trip, yeah, before but, this uh, year started when they hired Stan Van Gundy. This is first year, right? Who was our coach last year? Gentry. Gentry. Yeah, with Gentry, right. Right, J.J. Reddick was dealt with Gentry. J- dealt with Gentry. Sam Van Gudzi come in, he like, man, I'd have had this dude, you know, in a joking way on I saw him on, a, you know. But that says a lot. It's like, well, he must be doing something people don't agree with. I just right. saw Skip was like, he don't think he the right choice for him because, before the Pelicans, because he be taught, he's not somebody you jail with as a player. He said Dwight Howard used to clown with him just to try to right. feel make the situation better because they didn't like how he got down. So that may be a big part, man. You done got Stan Van Gundy knowing you about to draft Zion. Right? He right. coming for the draft. Stan, Stan, I will see it. I can't I don't, I'm not sure, but. Whatever, whether you got it before or after, you knew Zion was in the picture. You know, either way. But um, but I was gonna say though, he don't need a yes coach. Van Gundy gonna do whatever to keep him happy, man. He needs somebody that's gonna come in there and not gonna play with him. See, like Sam, like all last year they showed Sam in the playoffs when they was in the bubble. When um, what sound with Philly last year? He was with somebody last year. Who? Sam Cassell. He was with somebody last year, and I think it was like a clutch part of the game or something. And somebody missed free throws, but it was like a key player. Like, he went off on him, and they asked him about it in the interview. Like, yeah, you know, dude, like, man, I don't play all that, man. Like, you know, you Paul George, man. You don't, man, you supposed to be making these free throws, man. I don't want to hear that. Ain't no excuse for this at the end of the game. You supposed to be making them free throws. When I seen that, I'm like, oh, Sam Cassell, one of them old school, you know. See, he has an old school mind frame. But he's moving with the game. Something like Doc. Doc got an old school mind frame, but Doc know he got to change his coaching coaching style to keep up with what's really going on. I just don't think the Van Gundy's gaining past them by, man. They need somebody that's running, running this new stuff, man. I figured, I figured, fuck my sign, y'all. So, uh, y'all gonna introduce yourself? Yeah, we're gonna introduce ourselves, man. You know, do you want me to introduce you or what? Are you, well, you got it? I'm D. That's Lil D, man. That's this Big C-D. Noodles. Lil D, Big Noodles. You heard me? Whatever you want, call uh, You hear me? The 17th, Uptown. To, to the, the seven wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we coming, bro. 
That big rep two set, you hear me? Yeah. You know, rep two sets, he grew up bro. uptown, but he been in that seven. Hell oh, yeah. But um I'm C D. You hear me? We ain't got a name for the show yet, but we practicing, baby. We practicing. I'm C D they, you know, Probably some people call perfect. me Paw Paw. OG coach. You know what I'm saying? A few little nicknames. But um it's the sports podcast, man. In opinions, you heard me. Shout out Big Dean, man. You Shout heard out me? Dean, man. Pooh, Shout out man. Big Dean, you know. P3. It's we here, man, but we smoking. We about to talk about these sports. We're gonna get on the local scene. We're gonna get on the NBA. We're gonna get on the NFL. You could just look forward to us keeping it real from a street point of view, from right here to Indo. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to get it on. But I wanted to move to that East, man. I feel like I wanted to go with uh, talk about this boy, Joel and B, bro. The, he, he looked like he trying to be the best player in the league. Yeah, he missing something. <laughs> I don't know what, what he could be listen, missing. I never seen him. This this my only thing with him be. I never seen him give a hundred percent yet. That's scary. See what I'm saying? What you I mean by giving a hundred though? I never seen him go his hardest yet. And he's averaging like twenty five and ten, but he he don't go as hard as yet. Like Barkley, like Barkley and Shaq and them say, that's why they mad with him. Because he's supposed to be averaging the most points in NBA history right now. <laughs> he got the traits. He got the traits. He got everything he need. It'd be in history, bro. Yeah, he got the everything he need to average 33 and 20 a night. That boy's supposed to never have less than 30 on the board every night. That that dude really supposed to be unstoppable. But I don't know what's going on with him. He's supposed to be unstoppable. He could put the ball on the floor. He big. He's more... He's more athletic than, and, and skilled than Shaq ever was. Barkley told Shaq this in front of his face. Not the better player. He not, he's, he's not more athletic than Shaq, though. Yes, he is. You know why? He, he run, he, first he's of all. He's not more athletic. He's more athletic. He's he, more skilled. Shaq just had more bounce. When I say at, athletic, he's up and down. He can run around. He can move. He, Shaq couldn't do all that. Shaq was athletic in his own way. Shaq was a bully, a beast down there. But Shaq can't do half of the shit this dude could do for I'm real. Saying, young Shaq, this dude getting the ball at the top of the key, Shaq taking was, was, was athletic. But Shaq wasn't getting the ball off a rebound or something and bringing it up, passing it, getting the ball back at the top of the key, and Euro stepping his way to the goal and, and, and shit like that. True. I be seeing MB do shit KD do sometimes. With the ball, MB, just be uh, how I started it. He looking like he might he trying to be the best player in the right. league. And he, but he take plays off and shit. He take nights off and shit. That's why a lot of people be hard on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this year, I did don't look like he taking no nights off. You, you, you watched the last three games. He had forty something other night. Yeah, and that's and taking plays off. No man. Yeah man. I think he in the MV. I think he in the lead the MVP. MB. I think I don't. Jokic. It's him and Jokic. 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 But I, I'm gonna take him over Jokic. Jokic. But another person that's not getting mentioned for MVP. But if they finish first in the West, I feel like you got to give it to him. But see his name not coming up. But it wouldn't surprise me because we already seen somebody average 16 points a game and win the MVP. It Ooh. matter where you have your team at. Steve Nash. He, no, Steve Nash averaged 20, man. No, he averaged 16, won the MVP. Yeah, that's why they couldn't believe he beat Kobe out for the MVP. That nigga averaged 16 per something points a game. No, man. When he won the MVP that year, his last uh-uh. MVP. Check it. His I last MVP, it. he averaged 16 points a game. But I said all that to see. Chris Paul should be in the MVP discussion. 
CP3 should be in the MVP discussion. <coughs> I would, I think he, yeah. he may be in it. CP3 should be a top five candidate for MVP this year. Yeah, let's look at it. Steve Nash averaged 16 points a game one of them years he won the MVP. It was, like, pitiful. No, man, I'm average 20 and 10 or something. That's why he won it. But Chris Paul did it too, though, so he could have won it. his MVP season. I'm out of here with Opal. Opal was one of them. Told you. 16 points a game. I'm telling you. Ain't no fucking way this boy averaged no 15 and a half points and won the And MVP. won the MVP. That was the big shit. Like, ain't no way. And then he won it back to back. He won MVP back right, to see, back. He got two 18.8, 18.6. And he averaged, see, he averaged 11 and a half, that 15. He won it. Just, these days, that ain't enough for sure. That ain't right. Yo, fuck, what you doing? But Chris Paul is averaging 20. Chris Paul averaging 20 right now. Yeah, see, I think one of these years, Chris Paul averaged like 20 and 10. Averaged more than him. That's crazy. It's a joy and be, dude, bro. That dude. Yeah, he 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 got everything. He the total package. All right, that's what it was. Them two years after Steve Nash all oh, did it. Well, didn't even average twenty and eleven or whatever. Chris Paul averaged twenty one and eleven and a half. He then twenty two the and seven, eleven. Eight. Then damn near twenty three and eleven. Right. Didn't win MVP none of them years. Didn't like win Kobe MVP. won in one of them years. Kobe won in his MVP yeah. Yeah. Chris Paul, real years. MVP season when we lost to the Spurs that year. I think LeBron may have won it one of them other years. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Paul, the GOAT. That's why I said that was the worst fucking um, MVP ever. That was the worst MVP ever the year. Steve Nash beat Kobe out for the MVP, and they had to make it up to Kobe. They came back the next year. Matter of fact, yeah, Kobe got CP3 MVP, and Nash got Kobe shit. Kobe averaged like 27 points a game that year. They still gave the bitch to Steve Nash then. They come back next year, Chris Paul done all that shit, and they gave the MVP to Kobe when Kobe wasn't the MVP that year. He was the MVP the year before. Yeah, I can believe that. Cause fuck this voters and yeah, they shit be going on. Ain't no and, way you know. Steve Nash was supposed to get that MVP. Ain't no way. No. I think Phoenix finished number one. I, I want to say that's that year when um when when when, when Robert Ory closed line and bust all his nose and shit and Omari and them ran off the bench. That was that year that the Phoenix really was gonna win the championship. They knew that they ain't want to kill that Spurs dynasty. I I still I still know I, I I ain't gonna never forget that game when that boy closed line that dude like that. They they put suspended him for one game. He was supposed to be out for the whole series. He was supposed to be out for the rest of the playoffs. That was the that was the no. cheapest shot I ever seen in the history of me watching ball, and in, in all sports. That was the cheapest shot. That I was ever a cheap seen. shot. That was the he cheap. He did that. That wasn't cheap. Nothing cheap about it. Bitch, I'm hitting you. That is cheap. It, a cheap shot meaning it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't within the lines of the game. He just straight up said, fuck him, and bust him up. Boom, I don't care what the consequences is or nothing. Like they told that boy in the huddle, we don't like care what they do to you. Fuck him up. That was a hit scene. Now, how they call that shit with the Saints? That was a fucking basketball bounty. For sure. That was a basketball bounty. I'm taking that to my grave. Nigga ain't going to tell me that the hit wasn't sent. Fuck him up. I ain't never seen nothing, man. He bust all Nash shit and everything, man. Nash was all bust up bleep. 
Omari and them come out the bench, dog. It was it was extra. It wasn't nothing regular. He fucked Nash up. And them dudes got suspended for the next game. The Spurs go, go on and win the championship. Wasn't nobody fucking with Phoenix that year, dog. With Rajah Bell, all them niggas come. Them dudes had a bench and everything. Balls D out them when they were skinny. The skinny Balls D out. Not the fat one that was in. Them people had a fucking squad, man. Dude. That bitch that woke up, you hear me? Yeah. That people, bitch was over there sleep. Yeah, he, them people had a squad. He, he clotheslined that fucking dude. Phoenix ain't been the same since. Since that since that year, when the Myron them came off that bench, that's when that's the year when I used to feel like I respect Timmy, but that was around the time when the Myron was the best power forward in the in the game. That when Timmy was just hitting the old stage, which he still was in his prime, but he was he was he was hitting his he was he was in his thirties and shit now. This when the was in his young twenties, he couldn't do nothing. He couldn't do nothing with him. Tim Duncan couldn't do nothing with this boy when he was 25. He couldn't do nothing with him. I, when I used to, from what I see, he couldn't do nothing with him, dog. And Spurs was going home. I feel you, but nah, that's Tim Duncan. It may look like that, because Amari flying and Duncan and, who, you know, Tim Duncan still probably had his 30, quiet, 15 rebounds. I can't really remember that series like that. I remember, I remember that shot that you know that that clothesline. I forgot when it happened. I thought it was like late in the game or something, or overtime or something. But I can't, I can't think of it like a hit. I think it was just a, a spur of the moment. Fuck it, I'm about to file this nigga, but it was a bad situation. It was a hit. You know what I'm saying? But he fucked him up though. They was lethal though, Sean Mary and them. Them bitches had a squad. Yeah. They changed the NBA on some shit. Yeah. To be real, like Mike D'Antoni, we just gonna outscore you type of, you know. What they call? Forty minutes of hell, huh? Or some shit what they was running. Yeah, man. Like we up and down, Barbosa, Marion, yeah. Steve Nash, we Ra- running and flying. Roger Bell playing D. You know, Bell, to young put young Bell. COVID, you know, he used to check the Cobras and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. And I want to say that year they had Michael Finley. They was deep, dog. Yeah, I think they, they had Michael I Finley. I think they had Michael Finley. Like, they just was deep. They had a nice eight man rotation for sure. You know what? That make me remind myself, I fucks with Mike D'Antoni. That, he ain't never win that bitch, y'all. That was his best team, dog. He ain't even got to the chip, huh? No. Phoenix, dog. That, that fucking Houston was the furthest he got. It's yeah. like, the, the, it's like the, the, the ball just falls short fucking with Mike D'Antoni. If, you know, I don't, you know, it just... Damn, all Chris Paul got hurt. It was going to beat Golden State. See, what I heard, what I heard in Phoenix, they didn't, they didn't have that real. See, Steve Nash, he can, run the, he can run the show and control the pace of the game, but they didn't have that perimeter player that can impose his will on the game when need be. They had good perimeter players, role players. Did he have a Kobe, a, 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 a killer, a Bradley Bill? Say, you know, you know? No, I could, I could simplify it for you like this. We know Chauncey was the man on that Detroit team, right? But they had rep. Solid two guard who gone. When it's time, y'all only average 17 points a game, but like when it's time, I'm about to take over and run the show. You know what I'm saying? Something like Paul Pierce. We got Ray Allen, them and woo. But when it's time to get, they didn't, Phoenix didn't have that. Rajah Bell, them wasn't that type of, wasn't them type of players. Barbosa, them pushed the ball good. And, but Barbosa was really a one. Into, like in today's game now, nah, Barbosa coming to the league, Barbosa would have been the coldest looking point guard in the fucking league right now in this era. But he was playing with Steve Nash, so he had to play off the ball. 
I always tell people I've never I, seen I, I, nobody I, like that. I like it. that. I like that because they didn't have no, a rip is so important to the Pistons. Because we know Chauncey was a the mid range killer. The offense. Yeah, yeah, and Chauncey, the point dude, still though, he still got to be reckoned with. He could shoot the ball, he a good point. But Rip was you really thinking about Rip. You really, your, your coach got to try to think about Rip. Yeah, Rip. Because they, they got Rashid in the post who could score on anybody. But this little dude who running off these picks, that Larry Brown shit, that Allen Iverson shit, whatever, you know, he the one you got to stop because he'll light you up. He on the average 17, 18, or 20. He probably you know. topped out at 20 or something. But I know it's plenty of nights. Rip ended up with 30, 35, 28. He can shoot mid-range and all day. He's one of the best mid-range shooters I ever saw. For sure, for sure. Because we kind of got our subject. But back to what the Pelicans need. That the Pelicans need help. Yeah, they need help. I'm not saying they don't because I, I said that they need coaching more than help. But it doesn't mean that they don't need help. They need help. They missing the fucking rip, uh, uh, Paul Pierce. So that's what the fuck we missing. We missing that perimeter player who can impose his will on the game at any time. We don't have that. You know who I felt like? If, if we had Drew Holiday with Brandon Ingram and right. Zion... Oh, that's pretty much the same team. A shooter, hopefully a J.J. Redick or something around. That was it. I think with Zion and B.I., we just need a per- another perimeter threat. Fuck it. Get rid of all of them except Ingram and Zion and go get Bradley, man. Stop playing. I wish we could get Bradley Bill That's what we Bradley missing. Bradley Ingram. Yeah, we missing Bradley Bill. What? You know what I'm saying? We don't have that Donovan Mitchell on our team. We don't have that uh, Bill. We don't have that Tatum uh, Brown. See what I'm saying? We don't have a Luca. I'm just going down the list. You know, we don't have a CJ McCullough. You know, we don't have a DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan would be straight for the Pelicans right now. Like, if we was to make a, a little move and get him for the low... He a nigga I could see I come over here and do good. We missing something like that. A two guard who gonna come and pose their will on the game. The mother rose in his value, his stock then went down. But we could use a nigga like him. Yes, indeed. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's what indeed. we missing, like a DeMarder Rosen. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yes. I mean, if we could get a better two guard, I think our D good enough. We need we need another legit scorer. Because I like B.I. I feel like B.I. can be... B.I. can be like a superstar, bro. If he, you know, it's kind of difficult not because he got Zion, but who who he was competing with last year? Uh, Drew Holiday? That's like, was it Drew Holiday? I like B.I. Because B.I. really supposed to be like a, a 25, 30-point scorer a night. Do six ten to do it all. Six eleven, my you know, seven foot damn there. So I think him and Zion should be they something should to be, be reckoned with. They should be locked like they in should be a uh, yeah. You know, you don't know who gonna get all, but in order to do that, I don't know, cause I. I'm starting to like Lonzo too, bro. He's shooting the ball good. I like Lonzo. I think he got to stay more healthy, but, uh, you know, I like Lonzo, man. Like, he can play D. We just need a, a better two guard. Who the fuck is our two guard? Like, I don't know. I like Josh Hart, but. I like Hart. That's what I'm saying. We know. don't even know who our two guard is. Yeah, who the fuck played the two? I really don't know. Damn. Can't they, you know, I know Eric Besso, fuck. I don't know. Lines will be hurt so much. I don't know if Eric Besso will start at the one. And they just play the backcourt, cause that's probably what it is. It might be Lonzo and Bledsoe. Yeah, Bledsoe be playing the two and shit. Yeah, and nigga don't respect Bledsoe shooting the ball and shit, so that's I don't see how Zion be doing, dog. The whole NBA, the stands, the coaches. The fucking babies in the stands know Zion is about to shoot the ball, 
right around the rim. Everybody, we all know it. Like, he ain't even about to shoot the ball at the free throw line unless y'all follow him. And the dude still dunking that bitch and laying that bitch up around everybody around this motherfucker. Yeah, and y'all know, y'all know where he coming with it. He, I, don't, I, don't, I, I ain't never saw nothing like that before. I haven't seen anything like him yet. Like, he's not even a center. He probably shoot the best percentage in the league. I ain't check it or nothing, but every time I check the stats on Zion, he be 14 for 19 and 11 for 15. Oh, you know, 10 for 20 at the worst. Like, he just be, he's got a great percentage. And everybody knew where he's shooting the ball at, and he's still scoring that thing on you. So, I think the I think I think the Pelicans gonna be real scary. I hope they get in this playing shit and get their feet wet with some playoff type of shit. Cause with they, I think they'll move away pretty much. They a move away with with Zion, Brandon, that Ingram. Even with Lonzo as trade bait all on the team, cause I like Lonzo, but they'll move away from from competing with with the best of them. And uh, cause you got a demon in Zion, and then you got a a baby unicorn with Brandon Ingram, you know, a baby Durant. But he got to come through. Can, can we can we go out, can we go after Clay? Yeah, man. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I just can't see I wouldn't Clay fuck coming with Clay. to New Orleans, too. I wouldn't fuck with him. I mean, if we had to like bet on Clay, like we had to like get rid of everything oh, just because right. of the injury and shit, you know, I would want Clay to just fuck, prove, you know, do your thing at going to state. And get back healthy, you know what I'm saying? You know, but as a GM, I, I feel like that's hard. Your job on the line right there. If he was, you know, of course he that he could play. You know, the injuries and shit, fucking right. I wish we had Clay. Yeah, we'll be gay. We'll be <laughs> fucking with some shit. But Clay was out too, God. But um, we'll uh, get off some uh, right quick. I'm gonna get on some local sports right fast, man. We had uh I'm how you felt about that championship, man. With that uh Mac Main Carver. Carver, yeah. <clears throat> man, first of all, fuck I couldn't make it. But this new shit nowadays, you know, we downloaded shit for ten dollars. We watched that bitch at the house, like, you know. Good I'm good man. watching that bitch like damn, you know, high school, we could watch this bitch on TV and shit. It's some shit. I but, know um, I'll be in there this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, I wanted to catch Carval. Yeah, I couldn't even get to a game. Like, like you know, it's COVID shit. And they'll set so it up loud. real good. And that night will be deep. Like, you can't, you know, it's hard to get a fucking game, you know, get in a fucking game. But, man, the championship was a good game, bro. From start to finish, man. Um, I thought it would be pretty close, just just off a brief, just because I knew Carver beat him by like eight eight to ten the last time they played. So I actually watched that one too on the TV, and um, so I'm like, you know, and I know that was the third time playing him, and I was just thinking that's a a, a, a young dude who, who played ball. Me, I just yeah. can't wait till this year. When they come back around, they'll play again. They'll have to play at each other's gym. They'll play twice for the district. And uh, I can see it now. You're not going to be able to get in the game unless you get a hookup on a ticket or something like that. I can also see people just making them play each other in the little local tournaments and everything because everybody's just going to want to see it. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, and they had a lot of that going on and shit. Like everybody was just meeting up with everybody, man. That was fire. So they gonna like, play just, each other a few times next year, and I'm gonna just go ahead on and say it now. Like I told them, they didn't think that Warren Easton and Carr 
was going to meet in the Dome two years in a row, but it happened. McMahon and Carver will play for this year's title again. Yeah. He calling it. They, yeah, Mc they will be. Carver they will. They will be one back. and two. They will be one and two again, <laughs> and they're gonna meet in the championship again. The only way they don't meet in the championship is if LH, L, LHSAA. If y'all watching, the only reason they go, they not gonna meet in the championship is is if y'all put them on the same side. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not gonna happen. Other than that, I don't see nobody be beating two. Carver, and I don't, see no and beat, beat I don't really see nobody beating McMahon on some district shit. Now, you know, I feel like they're gonna have a good record period. They, they, they're probably not gonna have a choice to be one and two. And Car- right. I know Carver gonna be coming beating the shit out of people, man. They gonna be so mad, man. On- what they gonna probably take yeah. it out on everybody. I'm calling for uh, Carver might go undefeated next year, yeah. Because Carver's going to be better. Carver had a lot of role players that was in the ninth, tenth grade that wasn't in their core, but they play a good role with the team. Them players are going to be good as their core players was this year. Now, when when this new season start, Carver role players going to be going to be good as they their core players was last year. They're going to be dangerous. Whole team jumping out the gym. Yeah, man. I'm fucking with Carver. With the, with the Carver. summer to work out? I'm fucking with uh, Carver, man. Shout out Coach Parlo, too, man. With Fast, bro. The Fast Basketball Academy, bro. It's a Carver alumni. It's a real dude right there, man. Doing this thing with this basketball shit. You know? And my dog, Pat, man. Camp Zoo. Dudes put a lot of work in with them kids, bro. Paulo and all of them done touch all them dudes at Carver. They still working with them to this day. We're not going to, uh, another subject I want to bring up, I mean, just want to bring up, we don't really got to talk about it, but uh, I feel like people need to be spreading the word and uh, get the LHSAA to sit back down and just reevaluate the whole process of what they're doing in the whole system because I feel like they ruined it. What's going on right now with this select stuff and all that, it's just straight crazy it's to me. Down, it's down, man. Yeah, ain't no way we should have... They got like 15 state champions, We be man. having 11, 12 championships for for one sport. The fuck going no, on? Indeed. And then, you know, for football, it's just bad. Like, how could a Catholic school actually beat their chest and say we champions when the playoffs is your district and three other teams? So the playoff bracket is so small, everybody makes the playoffs. Shaw made the playoffs. They was 2-10. and ten. They went to the playoffs. Like, what sense... What sense we really making? I don't know what they're getting out of yeah. out of that, but it has to go back to the regular yeah, way. It, it, it sounds like they want somebody wants to lift their hands up and say, "Hey, we did it. We won the state championships." I don't. That's that's the only way I can see it because I don't want these fake ass championships. No, see, this like, was really what's going on. You had schools like Evangel, John Curtis, you know, all these schools. They're good schools. But they're football factors. So they have 850 kids. I mean, they, they only got 450 kids that go to the school, right? But 150 of them play football. So for years and years, Curtis has about 20-something championships. But out of the 20-something championships, 19 of them were two-way titles. The people got tired and was just like, man, look, something got to shake. So the people, they went back to one of the other old methods, which play in, you can play in your enrollment class or you can uh, move up. up. So Curtis moved up, but they never will move up to the top level. So by them not moving up to the top level, 
they presented this select thing. But before the select actually started, Curtis did move to the highest level. And they wind up still going with the select. But I just don't get it because it just don't make sense, man. <laughs> it just don't make sense uh, uh, at all. You and know? It, it seemed like nobody like it. I don't run into nobody who likes that shit. Like, <laughs> you know, only, only people... At the end of the day, I mean, it, it's a lot more families who are going to be like, yeah, we want stay champion. The year, I don't the, know what the fuck get the, out of it, but... The year before COVID, D. LaSalle played St. Thomas Moore for the Division Two Select Championship. They have a Division One and they have a Division mm-hmm. Two. It's not enough team. That should be one division, and they playoff would be all right. If Division One and Division Two was together, they would have a nice playoff. But they didn't even put that together. The state championship was on St. Thomas More campus. They said nobody was there. They played like on a Saturday morning, 11 o'clock, championship game. Come on, man. Oh, shit. Nah. I ain't fucking with it. Nah, I don't like the select. Yeah. And Football I feel for like, sure, but even basketball, too, it's like, nah. Yeah. Like, because. It's too watered down, man. Like, now you forcing these kids to really play in these tournaments and play against everybody during the regular season I, when. You could really be getting yourself together, playing your district, and you'll be meeting who you need to meet. You know right. what I'm saying? But shit don't even matter. Nah, nah, it's just about getting some games in. Like, staying. Like, nah. They got, nah, they got the hardest division or something. Basketball might be, you know, 4A, 5A. Football, of course, is 4A, 5A. But in basketball, they got two A schools. only five players on the floor. I- I, I could just go from sport to sport and break down why it's just crazy because Carl, they've been to the dome nine out of the last 11 years and they won like four or five championships or something like that. But like my dad, my like my pa always would say, we still don't know truly if Carl has been the best team in the state when they won the three championships in a row. Because when they won the three championships in a row, the full A Catholic school, St. Thomas Wolf, they won three in a row too. They went undefeated. They had the best quarterback in the state. I forgot where the boy went, the white boy, number 17. And now they got the number one wide receiver in the state over there. They've been t- they beat D. LaSalle in the championship the last two years. And I never forget when Speedy and my little cousin, this was Speedy coming out party. Speedy was a sophomore. They just moved in the quarterback. They played St. Thomas Mo at St. Thomas Mo. Carl blew the lead. St. Thomas Mo came back, took the lead on him. It's like two minutes left in the game. Speedy throw the ball to him to the bomb. Carl wound up beating him. So I always wonder, like, can, can they meet Carl again? But right after that, they came. Like, two years later, they came out with the select. I feel like they took some good championship games away from us mm-hmm. with that. Because Carl would have been meeting St. Thomas more in that dome, and they, they would have been splitting championship with the, It wouldn't have just been no Carl, Neville, and Easton. It would have been St. Thomas more, Evangel, you know what I'm saying? They're taking true championships away from us. Like last year, Catholic of Baton Rouge, they beat John Curtis in the championship. But Bird, Bird won the title. I won't say Bird beat. It wasn't, wasn't. Bird beat Destrahan for the title. And I think Destrahan went to the dome. But make a long story short, I mean, there wasn't no true champion because they still had another team out there that won the championship. That's why I don't, that's that's the reason why I don't like it. But I feel like 
as a community, I feel like we ain't contest that hard enough as we should. That 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 need to that that needs to change immediately. <laughs> that for real. That needs to, that needs to change immediately. You mean to tell me? And then that's how stupid it is too. Calico Baton Rouge, Scotlandville, Dutch Town, Woodlawn and Baton Rouge, Santa Mont, all that shit in the same district, right? But when the playoffs come, Scotlandville, Calico Baton Rouge, they go to the select. But all of them in the same district now. They're still letting the Catholic school people be in the district with the public school. But when the playoffs start, they going in the select. What sense that make? Yeah, that don't make no sense. Because, you know, uh, Scotlandville fall under that charter school shit. So they gave the charter schools the option to play in the public or the select. Scotlandville chose to select. That's why Smartman was winning select championships. Yeah, I know. They wasn't winning the public. That's why a nigga wasn't respecting it. You know, they, we knew who smart was. They wasn't, re, they wasn't respecting their chips because they was in the select. And um, Bird, Bird was in the select the first year it was select. Rummel won their first championship against Bird. They beat Bird for their first championship. After that year, Bird hurry up and got out that shit. Right. Bird hurry up and... We going back. We we going back in the public school thing. I think the Catholic schools don't have a choice. Them charter public schools have a choice. Bird played in it one year, and had rep and got out that shit. But it got to stop. Cause Saint Og yeah, Saint Og stop. won the five A championship this year. But fuck, we don't know who, what them people's working with. Whoever won that, uh, whoever won the five A championship, the boys. What? Saint mm-hmm. Og won the select title. They probably basketball. wouldn't. Basketball. Yeah, right. basketball. They probably wouldn't have won the title in there with everybody. Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. They wouldn't have beat no Carver. <laughs> no Foy, Carver Foy. So we don't know. Saint Og, what's Saint Og five it? Saint Og five it. St. Nard 5 is so. You know, but St. Nard play over there in Roman. St. Nard got a fucking 2 way in Roman. Yeah. But always played up because half their Roman play football. They're not stupid. You know what I'm saying? They play up. Evangel did the same thing. They was whooping on everybody for about 10 years. Then people started complaining. Evangel went up to 5 and won that shit. Then they started losing a couple of years. They wasn't seeing. They wasn't winning it. They moved back. They moved down to Foy, but they never went all the all the way back down. Um, I ain't giving y'all history right now. You hear me? <laughs> but that yeah, bro. Select that it's select true, you know. is the worst shit ever. Yes, indeed. The Catholic man. schools separate from the public schools in the playoffs, and then. On top of that, like this year for football, the two, the number one and the number two seed have a bye the first week in the playoff. They got a bye the first week, and they don't even play a game in the third week. They win two games and they're in the Superdome. Yeah, that shit don't make sense. <laughs> Talking about championship. I don't like it. As a fan, I don't like it, you know, but... It's crazy because. And I know the kids don't like it. You know, in the back of St. Thomas, Mo I know these last three years, they've been saying in their locker room, like, we know we better than Carl. Like, we won't call, man. We don't want to keep playing. D. La Salle is a a, a 3A school, but they in Division II. Division II is 3A and 4A schools in there together. Division one is all five A school. When Division One was supposed to be all that shit together. You know what I'm saying? The people tired of whooping up on D La Salle and Notre Dame and shit. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, you know, they playing motherfucking uh, Union Parish and shit. You know, like, these people seeing Carl going to the dome nine out of ten years. They seeing Warren Easton, you know. I'm pretty sure them dudes wanted to see Warren Easton and Carl in these last four or five years because, you know, nobody around the state unless you follow ball. You don't even must know what's going on with St. Thomas Moe life. Yeah. But all the while, St. Thomas Moe probably been better than Carl these last five years. All these super teams Carl had, but probably wouldn't have been able to beat these people, but we ain't never get to see it, though, because of the select. Yeah. That's just phony. They've been taking too many good championships and playoff games away from us with that shit, man. You know, and the thing is, they don't... I don't think they understand that people be in tune like that. <laughs> like, you know, people let this shit, man. It's, you know, it's football shit. These people, families grew up playing ball or this particular school and alumni, mm-hmm. man. You know, that get people through their days, man. You know, they really be wanting to see this shit. <laughs> he just hit you with all that shit. That selects yeah. stupid, for sure. You know, and like, I'm... You know, I'm uh, I'm right in it. My little girl go to John Curtis, but I would much rather them open it up where she play basketball where they can they can play the top of the top in the playoffs instead of repping off that one game during the season when you play. You know that they gonna probably play a good team. Like look, I but, put you on point. Clyde Edwards he left. Remember, he was at Captain Baton Rouge. They won the chip his senior year. They beat Rommel in the dome. But your boy and them, Tevin Bush, Keith Tom Thompson, them lads of Walker averaging 30 to 40 purse a week, beat the piss out West Monroe in the dome, scored 50 purse on them, right? But we still ain't see the championship because Catholic of Baton Rouge was over there. Just beat the fuck out Rumble. Like, I would have loved to see Landry Walker and Catholic of Baton Rouge play for the title. So we had two 5A schools played, you know, played that year. Just don't like yeah. it. Yeah. That, that got to change. Somebody need to write them people. I mean, people been complaining about it. They been on it because... Somebody was showing me an article, and I, I can't find this article no more. But it did it did come back up about that. And I think they about to have a meeting. And something have to happen for it to... They got to agree on one thing for it to go back the regular way. But I don't want to say what, what it was because I don't remember. But something about to shake with that because it's just stupid. Yeah, and I don't think nobody like that shit. Watered down, too many championships, like, and then that mean like nobody can even be at these games, like, especially at the girl. With the girl championship, I mean, it could be bigger than that because you you're playing during school hours, like, yeah, like, like the fuck uh, game at twelve p.m. Wednesday, and last year the championships wasn't. Wasn't in the dome. Yeah, last year I wanna say the championships wasn't in the dome. But uh like one of the championships the shit didn't make no sense. You got people playing for 10 o'clock in the morning and shit on a Wednesday for their championship. Like, who's coming to that? Like, you got people playing. Like, Kent World Championship was Thursday, 11 o'clock. Oh, the fucking championship, man. Yeah, like your mom and shit can't, can't even come to the can't game. Can't even come to the game because she got to go to work. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Come on, man. Come on. It's just another game, then. Like, you ain't even... Man. 
of the net, but with this high school sports, hopefully we can go to the game this year. High school just was always one of my favorites because I grew up on it and watching it, and I know the history of it, and it's just sad, bro. That that that's a big part. Of this this of the sports COVID that man high school atmosphere man it's like it's nothing like it nothing. it's nothing like high school sports from the football side to the basketball side it's nothing like it you know it's nothing like it at all at yeah all. I just love hearing the band play like you right face to face with the crowd yeah it's yeah. intense man it's intense it's intense yeah man it's intense. Last big game I went to, it was all on the track, man. Uh, when Easton played Cub and Lance went for two and didn't get it. That was a hell of a game. Yeah, that was a good game. They stopped people. It was all on the track, man. I took what game it was? Easton and Cup. This was the this this was for the district title. This was a. Uh, oh, I remember that. This was the first time they met in the Superdome, but for the district title. What they played at Joe Brown. They played at Burma. At Burma, it was at It was at Burma. Easton scored and went for the win. Easton scored with like 15 seconds left in the game. And didn't get it. Went for the win. Some people say he got in. Some people what say did he did. Try to run that. They did the QB blast. They did the QB the hut QB blast. But the one, one I ain't gonna lie, that little dude from Cup blew that shit up. Dude blew that shit up. Dude blew that shit up, and he had to. He had like, if this nigga don't come blow it up the way he just come took a risk and shot it up, he uh, he automatically get in. But um, yeah, I'm 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 tweaking to go back in that atmosphere, where it's shoulder to shoulder, the band and this thing blowing. You know what I'm saying? I just like them type of games. Yeah, right. yeah. Tailgate, they, they you know now they tailgates and everything. Car cuts up, car cut up, car got tailgate and everything. Car got, got a nice ass school now too, man. Uh, Thank y'all for watching. We coming with the C, D, and D sports for right now, you heard me? I'm fucking with that for right now, you know. Until further notice. Until further notice. You yeah. dig? We're going to come back with some shit. Come back with some more info for y'all. Maybe next show we'll talk about, uh, as far as on the local side, we'll talk about recruiting. Because, uh... It's around that time a lot of our kids out the city are going to be leaving, going out to school. They've been signing with college and stuff lately. We'll keep y'all posting and updated on where these guys are going at. We'll get into that next uh, yeah, next episode. Man, next episode, you dig, you dig. And we'll tap in on the draft because by the time the next episode comes. Yeah, the draft coming up. No. Yeah, it's on the draft on See the See a lot of movement going on. I'm slipping. Who going to get oh, these quarterbacks? Before we get off this podcast today, you know I be saying my off the wall shit. I'm letting y'all know right now. Yeah, I'm letting y'all know right now. The boy Wilson from BYU, he's going to be everything we thought Johnny Football was going to be. This is him. Remember I told y'all, yeah, Zach, yeah, Zach yeah, Wilson, up. BYU. He like that. He like that. He coming like that. This this the best quarterback draft ever. Ooh, we put ever on. This it. the best quarterback draft ever. I didn't I didn't, I didn't I look say at it ever, like that. When I say ever, they got four quarterbacks that's about to play 15 years in this league. <laughs>